just on time. But I always tell people it's just on time all the time. <laughs> we have apologies for uh, being 10 minutes late. We had technical difficulties and uh, that is what it is, right? Yes, it is. But guess what? We're here. And you know what? Usually what I say when someone's late, they're not really late. They're on time. Basically at the time that they're supposed to be here. So, oh my goodness. So here I am again on this amazing Monday. And I'm hoping all of you had a great weekend. You are, you know, sitting, you got a pen and paper. You have, uh, you know, maybe a little snack or your lunch. I'm not sure if you have your coffee. I see Pierre uh, has his. I have uh, some water here. And you're ready to just take in all the information that he's going to share with us. Uh, first of all, my name is Tammy Williams. I'm one of the executives with Lana for Success, which is a platform that brings people and business together. We're all about uh, helping each other get to the next level in their business. And we have a number of areas and different ways people can actually participate in our platform. But never mind about the platform right now. Today is to spotlight one of our members who has also been a gifting sponsor. This gentleman has so many accolades, has such a big heart, and uh, the knowledge that he has, honestly, you can't even put a price on it. He is uh, Mr. Pierre Jean Gallant. He has an MBA, an FICB, SME, CSC, IF, IFC. He's the chief executive officer, chief executive officer, the, pardon me, um, with market to market, CEO. I prefer that instead of the whole chief executive officer. But let me say it properly that who you are, uh, Mr. Gallant, to so many people is a resource. You're a light in the space of business where people don't know where to go. I know that you have helped entrepreneurs, aspiring entrepreneurs, business owners, whether they had the brick and mortar store or even online. And I'm just so privileged that I get a chance to get up close and personal with you in this platform. This is our series number two. We have three more that you are giving away free information to help everyone globally. It's not a local thing. This is globally. So enough about, uh, you know, uh, what I'm talking about here. I know that you guys only want to hear from Mr. Gallant. So can you please get right into our second series? Because I have been waiting anxiously on what is going to take place today. And we have a half an hour. I'm looking at the time right now, 12.15. So we're going to go till quarter to one uh, because we had some delay. And I'm going to do our best. I will actually keep us on time. Perfect. Thank you so much, Tammy, and thank you for, uh, for that, those great accolades, and uh, thank you to Landed for Success uh, for uh, hosting this, and uh, it's, uh, it's a great opportunity, so I invite you to come to Landed for Success. They have um, uh, networking events online every month. So keep, uh, keep your agenda open, check out the times, and uh, please uh, join us at the next event. So um, right now I'll be sharing with you. Uh, Tammy, can you confirm that we can see the screen? Yes, I can see it perfectly. Perfect, perfect. okay. So I'm gonna hide this floating meeting controls, and uh, we should get going. So today we're going to be talking about uh, one of the uh, foundation uh, areas of having a company. So it's the tone of the top. So tone of the top is not only for compliance, because in, in the past it's been known as uh, related to uh, internal fraud, etc. Uh, but the tone of the top is really what uh, will help you implement your values, your strategic plan, uh, how you're going to be managing your staff and the relationship with your suppliers, with your clients. Um, so we'll just get on and head to um, it's uh, it's by the way, Tammy, I, I know you said market to market. I'm also CEO of Complete CU Services, which yes, this yes. will be uh, um, a presentation that's mostly related to Complete CU Services. So Complete CU Services, one-stop shop for business solutions. 
And uh, our motto is to uh, uh, get you guys, uh, give you a success and profitability of your businesses. Um, the content in this presentation is protected under Canadian Intellectual Property Copyright Act, registration 1168-379. Uh, exception of stock images and photos, as well as definitions of leadership create, credited to Bruna Martinuzun, uh, presentation skills training, author, columnist, business trends, and insight, Clarion Enterprises. Um, so any questions that you have related to um, um, complete to services and to this presentation, here are our coordinates and I'll, I'll display them again at the end of this presentation. So let's get uh, cooking. Who are we? Well, I kind of described that. Um, we've been around for six years now. Uh, we have a lot of experience in different types of industries and our team of professionals um, have over 30 years in financial service industry as well as other types of industries and business. So today, tone at the top, not only about compliance. So tone at the top, establishing a balance between your personal values and entrepreneurship and your company values, the relationship with your suppliers and your clients, and implement values in your strategic plan, HR staffing, and getting a good balance, influencing your staff, and place in your network. So basically, the, as we see in this, uh, this slide here, everything that's uh, the tone of the top is going to influence your sales, going to influence the atmosphere of working in your company. It's going to be really giving uh, the tone and the pulse of the company. That's why it becomes very important. Um, there's no, I wouldn't say there's a particular way of, uh, of being a leader, but some of the styles are, are older, like um, autocratic is a little bit uh, passe. And you have to figure out who your staff is. So if your staff is in a younger demographic, autocratic may not work uh, because it is kind of a do as I say type of uh, leadership. So most of those leaders, and, and believe me, in every one we're gonna see seven different ones, I've, I've done all seven. So, at the beginning of my career, had didn't have very much experience, but as your, your staff evolves or as you change teams, um, you have to adapt to that team. So you have to be an agile leader today. So you have to really adapt to the generation and also to your clients, because if you're doing something like your autocratic was Bill Gates and Steve Jobs or Bill Gates presently and, and before Steve Jobs. Um, but this type of leadership, they believe that they're the smartest person at the table. They know more than the others. They make most decisions. There's no input from uh, the team or their peers. Uh, and it's really commanding and being controlled. So this would work more for an older generation, kind of like myself, because you know, my first boss, I remember used to, I was working in a restaurant and he used to swear at me all the time and say, you're so effing stupid. Wow. So, really? Uh, yeah. But you get, you, you know, this is like back in the 80s, early 80s. Um, so that was the style back then. I mean, there was uh, one person in charge and you just had to listen and it was based on fear. So I'm not saying that this, this type of leadership would work on me today, but <laughs> perhaps in the past it would have. And maybe there's still a lot of those um, individuals left or that type of stuff. But again, it doesn't mean that you should not use this. It depends, again, on your staff. But, you know, I, from, a, from an HR perspective, you know, it's now called bullying. Absolutely. 
Yeah. I put I originally when I put this slide together, I had put uh, dictator and bullies, but then I thought, you know what? I'll just put autocratic because that's the definition. Exactly. Essentially, that's what it is. So again, uh, it could work if you're maybe in a manufacturing type of environment where a lot of the uh, your demographic is Gen Xers and uh, baby boomers, but I don't think it would be very popular with um, because of little creativity. So I don't think it would work very well with younger generations. But you know, it, it's up to you. Um, authoritative style. So this is more um, where there's a visionary or a leader, and people are following the visionary. So uh, it's a leadership style which marks a lot of confidence in the leader. So people are prone to to kind of follow this uh, this individual. Uh, in a climate of uncertainty, uh, these leaders will probably be a good thing to have because they, they show that they have a lot of confidence and they know where they're going. Uh, again, um, unlike autocratic leaders, uh, the authoritative leader takes time to explain their thinking, but they're not, they're not just issuing orders, but they're uh, they're still not allowing for a lot of, of latitude uh, in terms of creativity for employees. But again, it could be in uh, depending on your work environment or depending on what your product or service is. It could be, it could be like I mean, if you're a collection agency, maybe, <laughs> you know, there's different different styles and different flavors for everything. Uh, pace setting style. So this is more uh, do as I do. And one of the things that that you know I always mention uh, in these type of, of presentations is people have a tendency of acting like parents when they when they first step into a leadership uh, position. And uh, those you know I did that myself. Uh, there's nothing wrong with that. I mean you're gonna. You're going to learn if that's the right way to behave in your work environment. But that's something that's common in most leaders. They are treating some of their employees as staff, unless, I mean, and this applies mostly to the older generations. So the pace setter style of leadership is like, well, do as I do, um, not as I say type of thing. But um, it's also demonstrates a lot of confidence in, in the uh, in the leader, um, and it it eases a lot of tension because some of the employees just want to follow. Uh, so you know, there's different cases. Again, if you're working in um, with a lot of artists, uh, this probably that have a lot of great ideas or a marketing. You don't want to listen to one person because it's one opinion. Um, however, it could uh, it could be serviced in, in a lot of different industries. Well, I have a lot to say about all of these. This is interesting. I hope we get a chance to talk in a little bit more. <laughs> yeah, democratic style. So um, they always seek uh, employees' opinions before approving a final decision. So it's important in this one. So what do you think? Uh, they share information with their employees about anything that affects their work responsibilities. Well, I got to tell you, I, I had pretty much every style of leader, but I had one, um, one of my directors at one point was always asking me, what do you think? What do you think? What do you think? And it was so much it showed so much insecurity that the person or the, 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 the boss or the leader wasn't able to take a decision. So you can't go too far and say, what do you think? You have to you know, engage in a discussion and say, well, oh, if you think that, yeah, what, what, what's the reason why you would believe that? Uh, and then you got to have a discussion about it, but not just take the employees or the staff members 
decision on what do you think because it can it can also show uh, that you don't you can't take decisions and then employees and staff will lose um, confidence in your leader and that happened to me uh, with that particular uh, director and it also happened to the rest of the staff they were like they had no respect for him because he wasn't able to take a decision so it has to be good balance in that type of leadership coaching style um this is uh you know kind of uh, uh a, a good and more uh, modern way of teaching as kind of or or being a leader um leader who uses a coaching approach um kind of like is digging down to the person showing the the main standards or the main requirements and then allowing the uh, the staff members to kind of you know get get that uh, get that get it done within the uh, staff's abilities so it's it's kind of uh, an interesting one because it it also helps with it's kind of a delegation task mm -hmm. so okay this is the way you do it but if you do it, if you get the same result at the end, that's fine, right? So that sometimes empowers uh, staff, uh, gives people a little, a little direction to help them tap into their ability to achieve all that they're capable of. So it's 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 a nice, uh, it's it, it 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 works in a very good environment as well. Affiliative style, so. Um, this is really where staff comes first. Um, it's about, you know, I was in one working environment where uh, I had a staff, uh, a lot of well, staff members, and this was very important because there was a lot of conflicts within the team. Actually, it happened to me twice, um, where there's a lot of conflict between employees. So I had to, you know, manage the uh, individuals that were, you know, suffering a little bit because of the others. Uh, so they were kind of being bullied a little bit. There was clicks. Um, and then on the other hand, you had to kind of tame them and then get to the, the individuals that were kind of low and, and, and felt emotionally depressed and cry, kind of bring them back to show that they they were capable of doing it and kind of you know put the mix together. So this is yeah. this is um, you know trying to it depends obviously, but if you have a team that's already um, in this type of environment, it's easy to continue. But you can't get into too much like I guess personal things. You got to keep some sort of distance or keep a high level uh view of things it's it's useful in smoothing conflicts as it says at the bottom among team members reassuring them during times of stress so basically every time that i had this type of thing i would take the staff members outside of the work environment and we do team building exercises okay. uh, one of them that was really uh, successful was we go to restaurants or uh uh, I would rent to uh, uh, a hall or something, and we say, "Okay, what, say something nice about the person next to you," and you would make sure that these people, uh, you know, say something positive about the colleague to your left and yeah. the colleague to your to your right. So then, you know, even though those people didn't necessarily like each other, they would find out something else, and so it kind of uh, it, it's it's delicate, but. It's uh, a way to resolve conflict. The laissez-faire style, so that's more like you just let people uh, kind of do what they need to do. Um, this is really productive like uh, in a Google type of atmosphere um, or, you know, those uh, IT companies that just as long as you do the work, you know, uh it works for us and there's no significant leader but 
if you're in a um, again it could appear aloof it could be mm -hmm. appear that it could cause mayhem depending on the type of employees that you have yeah so if you let a whole bunch of uh, you know leaders together um, that all have a different idea and then they yeah. all want to do different things and that happens a lot see the issue is with leadership styles is that you can have a leadership style that'll be that'll accommodate three of your 10 employees so you have to make sure that you're so agile that you're able to to manage the different styles so as an example i would not i would probably be a little bit more autocratic to an older generation uh staff member and the reason why is because if i say okay that's it i um that individual will be like this guy doesn't know you know this guy's not a boss right um so you have to be careful it's really really important that you have a good pulse on who your team is and there's going to be different types different cultures so you have to be really good at analyzing who your team is so choosing leadership styles is knowing which leadership styles works best for you and what is being part of a, a, a good leader so developing a signature style like i said um, i've used different methods and sometimes a mix of those methods but it's really important that you take those decisions either before you get into a, a, a business model or that you take over a certain department in a, in a business or even if you have, you know, you've been there for a long time, this can always be very valuable to you because you have no idea how some people are miserable and you can increase productivity if you can get in their, you know, on their side and try to expand the, or treat them the way that they would like to be treated. So start raising awareness of your type of, of, of uh, leadership style, um, you know, and then you can, they say, like they, they advise that you can ask your colleagues. I don't like that approach because when you start asking colleagues, how do you think I do this? Yeah. It doesn't really show a lot of confidence in the person, but try to take a step back. If you really don't know, uh, I would suggest that you go and take some uh, uh, leadership assessment uh, tests, and it'll give you a, a you know a good good pulse on what your what you, what type of leadership uh, you're you're uh, exercising at this present time, and you know where where what direction you should go and modify it. So understand and get the different styles. Uh, practice makes a leader. So be genuine with any approach, because if you're trying to be somebody else that you're not, let's say that you're trying to be a, a, a democratic leader and you're not, it's going to show and it's not going to work in your favor. So it's better to keep to your style if it's totally unnatural for you to to use a different approach. Uh, practice the new behaviors until they become natural. So if, if you're an autocratic and you want to become more agile in one of those or several of those different types of leadership, make sure you practice. Practice at home. Practice with your, with your friends. Practice and it'll, it'll become a part of you because honestly, you are pretty much the way you are at home the same way that you're at work or at least you're going to bring that into any type of, uh, of, of, of uh, area in your life. So um, uh, traditional leadership styles are still relevant in today's workplace, but they may need to be combined with different approaches to the 21st century. Again, like, you know, if you're producing a certain product, 
and it's always been that way, it doesn't mean you, you don't need to change because I'll tell you today and tomorrow is a different world. It's, it's, it changes on a dime. And what I find the most important is that as the demographic is changing, the uh, Generation Zs that are in their early 20s right now are entering the job market. And if you're stuck in a, you know, old uh, way of uh, leading staff, you're going to have a hard time. You're really not going to be able to, you're not going to be able to keep these, uh, these are great assets to your company. You need that. You need to have a mix of generations. And if you're a sole proprietor, ask your kids. My kids, I mean, they're not part of my business, but they keep me real. They really give me, uh, you know, they say, dad, that's, that's inappropriate what you're saying. And I have to step back and I go, yeah, you know what? Uh, I, I'm just stuck in my own generation. And uh, it was appropriate back then to say certain things, but today it's not. So I have to evolve. If I don't evolve, I become a dinosaur and I, I can't compete in the business. Even though my product is amazing, it's not about the product. It's not about the product. Mm -hmm, yeah. Like Amazon right now, can you imagine if they had a, if they had a whole bunch of, uh, uh, I'm gonna point myself out, if they had a whole bunch of 50 year olds uh, leading that company, we wouldn't be anywhere today. It's like, it had to be very agile. It had to respond to certain things. It had to be, you know, adaptable, agile. So this you is know, what I and, and you know, sorry to say that, but, um everything that you're talking about, the different leadership styles, it really actually, it's much more, there's so many more layers to it, right? Because you said something about the employees and the people that they're working with. So you also have to know the employees and the different things that you can actually do to find out who you have on your staff. But you know, from an HR perspective, when you're doing the hiring, um, whether you work for the company as an, a HR a recruiter or even using a staffing company, the way the world is now and how business is now, it makes it even more difficult to find the right individual to work in a company because things are moving so quickly and the stability in a job is not really there. We used to have all kinds of assessment tools. Uh, graphology, we used to use uh, different handwriting tools, different personality tests, open-ended questions to actually help us to find out who would be the best fit you know, at a certain company and even go deeper to the environments that they were gonna be working in, as well as taking a temperature, if you'd say, of the individual that they'd be teaming up with to see if who, what their personalities were. And with the individuals who look great on paper, who could definitely do the job, would they fit? And something you said here, it's not about the product. And when you're looking for staff, I think people get caught up with just hiring people, almost to the point of just having a body almost. Exactly. They're, Absolutely they're forgetting. Right. You're yeah, they're forgetting that it's not just the body and they look right on paper, but how do they think? How do they react? How do they respond? Are they a team player? And there's so many more layers to that. And so that's being lost because everything's happening so quickly. I mean, you've got people that have been at companies um, laid off multiple times and they have to just take that job. The environment's not great for them. They don't like the location. They don't like the person they're reporting to you. And they're not even actually excelling in that space because it's not the right environment for them so there's so many layers that are companies actually taking your wise counsel to look and examine themselves in their leadership self that's the question i have it's it's a great question it's very very hard uh, so most of most of my clients are uh financial financial uh, institutions so you know, they have a way of doing their own business. Yeah, and, and the issue, well, <laughs> I came the across issue, them a lot I'll of times. Exactly what the issue is that <laughs> a lot of this, like the governance models and stuff like that, this is what we prone, right? This is yeah. this is the only way to survive today. Unfortunately, it's like everybody's resistant to change. Yeah, so I can I can give them and I can coach them and I can bring them to another. Uh, I can I can try to 
you know, I plant seeds is basically what I do. Yeah. Um, but a lot of it is like, well, you know what? We've always done it like, like this before. We've always done it this way. And then they say, well, if you do it this way, and, it, and that works for processes too. A lot of them say, oh, we've always done it this way, PJ. But well, why are you doing it this way? It's a waste of time. You don't need that. You can cut that, that part of that process out and you're going to make more money. You're going to be more agile, et cetera, et cetera. I can tell some companies, hey, you know what? Here's how you save $100,000 a year in expense. Exactly. And they will, oh, that's nice and that's nice. And you know what? They're all on board. But then once they try to apply it, you know, other things you know, cut into the, the space. So it's, it's a hit and miss. Uh, I, get, I get very good results when the companies actually implement it and then mm -hmm. we do a follow-up and, you know, make sure that everything is happening. But what typically happens is that there's a couple of leaders in there that will say, you know, too many leaders, too many chiefs, and you know what, they, they and, and I'll be quite honest, when I was working for financial institutions as an employee, I was probably a nightmare. But, <laughs> but now are, you're a dream. Yes, but there are some, some of my bosses that recognize my passion and mm -hmm. my creativity. And those bosses, one of them, which is, was my partner who just retired, but would always say, okay, that's a good idea. You're bang on. I like that. That's, you know, encourage me. I would work like a hundred hours a week if I could to satisfy, to just hear those compliments. Yeah. So if you, you can drive some, and not, not to exploit them, but if you have somebody who's very, um, I, I think uh, I was talking to Erica the other day and I recognized myself. She says, you know, those type of people that put their hand up in in a in a classroom setting, if you're getting some training right away before, you know the person's not actually listening to what the teacher says or the yes. the, the trainer, and I'm that type of person. I I don't I disregard everything, and it's not good. It's not good. But I'll I'll put up my hand. I'll use an example. So, you know, uh, those type of, of individuals are hard to manage. But if you yeah. can. If you can satisfy their creativity and their ideas, they can be, they can bring you anywhere. Wow. This so, year, yeah, sorry, go we ahead. Could, you, we could talk about this for a very long time. There's a lot of layers to this. Let me take a look at what the time is because I have to be sensitive that we are, we're at our time. How many more slides are there? Because we should finish up. Not many, I just wanted to uh, show- Not many, meaning how many? Two, three? Uh, about three, yeah. Okay, four. so right now we're at um, 10 to 1, Pierre. Okay. I'll just uh, go through these very, very quickly. This is a, this is a model that uh, we're developing for market to market. So um, in terms of what we want to do, so this is also important when you're establishing your values. Um, we're going to be... Um, uh, contributing uh, to schools and trying to change the, uh, the, um, the, the younger generations. So we want to contribute to, to helping uh, reducing um, uh, racism and culture differences in schools. Um, and uh, we're doing that through different uh, types of things. Also contributing to uh, women, men, LBGTQ, um, this is all things that we're working on with market to market once we uh, start getting up and running. Uh, yeah. Workforce reforms, et cetera, um, in terms of helping the younger people that are in school today and to bring them to a better ideology than we have. Nice. Uh, so I'll just go a little bit. Uh, what we, the type of hiring principles that we're establishing is practice what we preach. So interviews are conducted by three employees at different levels of the organization. So it's not me who's going to be taking a decision. I want my staff, my 
you know, my team to be comfortable in hiring an individual because every individual is, is important at every level of every organization. Yes. Make sure that they have the same values as our company. So if they're off the map on a, on a few things, we're not interested. It's really about, you know, if you uh, have certain very strong opinions that against diversity, then we're not going to hire you. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not part of what we want to have. Yeah. Um, our type of um, uh, organizational chart. So we, we flatline everything. So executives report to, to me, but staff also reports to me. Uh, the executive, every staff member reports to an executive. So there's no, I don't want 35 people in line to, to, to bring an idea. Everybody's important, everybody's idea or perception is important. Um, so this is really uh, an agile type of org chart where you have a lot of success in terms of being transparent at every level. And if I've made a mistake or if my colleague has made a mistake, we can we 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 admit it. And the reason that's important is as a, as an employee, uh, I was working for a financial institution and uh, it was very refreshing when I heard the CEO of a huge financial institution say, "You know what? We made a mistake." We did, went in different directions. We were, had this project. We made a mistake, and uh, we have to start over, and we apologize. Nice. A CEO who's able to accept that they've made a mistake because nobody's perfect mm -hmm. will translate in a huge respect from the, those people's teams and their staff. Yeah. So we're not just successful. We're just always thinking outside of the box. Superior education is a business, so don't think about it. Just do it. Disruption is comfortable and keeps you young. Are, you pers are your personal values fair and respectful to everyone? Continuously revise your values and always question what society makes you believe. Uh, education is one thing, as I mentioned, but you you mainly maybe you don't want a, somebody who has certain boundaries people that uh are out of high school or that they have uh different skills uh, interpersonal skills are much more valuable than individuals that you know are formed and dictated certain things in university or you know go i don't want to get anybody upset but yeah. i'm just speaking the truth uh, for, for us, uh, by 2024, we want to share 65% of our net profits that are reinvested, reinvested so that we can increase the dollar amount of our donations. And 35% of all our net profits are donated because it's not our money. So we want to share it with this world. So again, um, if you have any questions rel related to this, please direct them on our website with the brief description and we'll get back to you by email or just send an email to info at completecuservices.com. Amazing. You know, the content that you shared the first session and now this one, they're really actually, there's probably like about a hundred different series. <laughs> right, exactly. For each one. So make sure that everyone knows that, you know, this is like a, a little bit of a, an overview, a glossary, if you will, of everything that his company is doing. And it does require expanded conversation. It does require um, an interest on your part to be a part of the solution so that you can actually really be profitable. This is what this is all about. And uh, looking at all the layers, I mean, you know, have you, I mean, there's so many different things. Sometimes the person that's the hiring manager shouldn't be the hiring manager. And that's, I know we're going to talk about later on in another um, series of yours, but um, I'm just so happy that you shared with me. You and I can talk forever about this because this subject really, really hits home to businesses um, in their uh, profitability, how long they can keep their employees and how to get the best out of their employees so they become productive. 
And you know, that one, one of the things, uh, Tommy, and I know you know this because I know wow. you, have a, you have a lot of experience in this, but a lot of the, the, the people that, you know, apply this type of strategies, yes. employees are not paid better. They're just, they just want, and that's the millennials as well. Millennials just want to enjoy their work. Yes. And that is key. Like I, every company I've left is because I was ha unhappy at some point, right? Yeah. And, and that's what you're going to do. Yeah, some of it is for the money a little bit, but mainly I want to be happy. Yeah. You know? I'm spending a lot of time there. And that's what the millennials, uh, that's their, their kind of their, their strategy too. And I think that's fantastic because, you know, unfortunately, uh, you know, like I told you originally, but I've had so many bosses who used to intimidate me, uh, you know, make fun of me. It was, it was really bad. It was unacceptable today, but you know, it was around and, uh, but today, you know, maybe that's part of the reason why I left, Yeah. Uh, you know, but, uh, it's important to, to cherish the biggest asset of any company is your staff. That's your all. Staff. I can say. That's all. I yeah. Can say. And, um, you know, even leading into that, as you're talking about that, there's really nothing new under the sun because from a recruitment standpoint where I used to get paid in recruiting the right staff for the right companies, we used to have individuals who would be given several offers and we present the offers and based on how they felt when they were there for their interviews and there was multiple interviews, they didn't always choose the biggest compensation plan. And we had people that would sometimes accept the higher compensation plan only to come back within 30 days and say they made a mistake. They'd like to see if the other opportunity that we presented them was still available with the money, you know, and we, you and I have so many similarities, you know, think about me being a black woman in a corporate world in positions where they don't usually see black people. Absolutely. Uh, I had my own, I had my own issues that I had to deal with, with individuals who now I was supervising them. And they didn't look like me, right? So think about the things that I had to deal with in that space, uh, you know, different conversations and things like that. So um, nothing really is different. I would like to think that uh, myself now being an entrepreneur, um, it's a much better place for me because now I can pick and choose who I want to work with as opposed to just staying where I need to be because I had to provide for my family. It's still to provide for my family, uh, but now I can be a lot more selective in that. And I think you and I can probably uh, relate to so many different things about being made fun of and not being taken, not taken, uh, not being taken seriously, you know, and who do you think you are, you know, because you have so much knowledge, your wealth of knowledge, you must have had all that too. So I can't wait. What's the next topic that we're going to cover? <laughs> Marketing your market. So, you know, we're looking at what's the name of your business. If you yes. have a business that doesn't, have anything to do with the service that you have or that you're offering. Yeah. <laughs> it's a dangerous thing. Uh, continuous strength, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. So okay. the SWOT analysis of so what you're doing in your market, but you got to do it not only the first time you open your business, but you got to do it all the time. Make yeah. sure that you're always in the market. If I, if I have a business plan that was pre-pandemic, it doesn't make any sense today. Oh, my goodness. Um, what is your competitive advantage and it's is it still relevant and the the thing is that we're going to be looking at but also thinking about is you know if you got a great product tomorrow it could be it, it, it's not worth anything right so like uh, you always have to make sure is my is my product still relevant yes because unfortunately a lot of people and i'm the same way you know uh, with my own businesses I'm, I'm sure that my service is the best and that it will never change. But I know that in 10 years down the line, a lot of what I do is going to be automated. You've got different uh, AIs. So am I going to be relevant in the, in the next 10, 20 years? I need to work until I'm 99 to pay off this mortgage. And, and kids <laughs> you education. will be relevant. You're relevant to all I'm, of us. I'm hoping that my kids won't go to university because I've, <laughs> I've told them, you guys got great ideas, so just open a small business or just open a yeah. business and, yeah. and just go for it. It's the best. I, you know, I have to say, because I worked in, in corporations for years and years and years, 
I have to say the best thing that you can do is just start your own business. Like if you yeah. believe in it or if you have, even what you're doing today, if you bring that and you, you contract yourself out, you're going to enjoy yourself. Yeah. You, you don't get the office politics and this and that. Yeah. I mean, you know, that's, that's, my, that's my sales pitch. That's so great please, advice. So the next seminar, we're, we're looking forward to that. I'll have a lot to talk about in that space as well because not every great idea is marketable. Exactly. So that also brings uh, someone in to help in that area because my goodness, there's so many ideas, but then people don't know how to market their idea. So that's another discussion. So um, thank you very much, everybody, for joining us. And we look forward to seeing you next Monday. Yay. <laughs> Enjoy the rest of your week. <laughs> Bye-bye, everybody. All right. Take care. Okay. Talk to you later. Take a lot.